because if you're looking at, you know, what we're from, you know, Impossible Burger, Beyond Meat Burger, they're, I mean, the grand scheme of things, they're tiny, tiny companies. And, you know, they may be worth a billion or two billion, but that's on a, on a, on a multi-trillion dollar scale, that's a, that's a tiny fraction. So it has to be outside of those guys. So who else is in on this? Uh, you know, it's who else the, stands uh, to gain from all this stuff? I mean, are we seeing big petrochemical companies, fertilizer companies, uh, mm-hmm. you know, agri- you know, all these huge companies? Who, who are the players that you think besides, you know, so so it's easy to point the, Beyond Meat and that stuff. The, the players that we can, all we have to do is look at the um, the list of companies that is part of this group called Fresh, which is affiliated with the Eat Lancet Commission. And um, so these are um, uh, petrochemical, ag- agricultural, uh, ag chemical companies, uh, processed food companies, pharmaceutical companies, all of whom stand to gain in some way from a plant-based future, which is dependent on artificial fertilizer used to grow monocrops to feed the world, basically. And so, and all of whom have something to lose if we were to go down the regenerative agriculture route of no inputs, no artificial inputs, um, going back to natural ways of raising cattle and raising crops, et cetera. So um, you just, you don't have to look any further. And uh, Somebody said to me the other day, we talk about the uh, the meat lobby being strong, but the not meat lobby is bigger. The not meat lobby in- incorporates a whole bunch of industries which all have something to gain from this new future. And, and people have a hard time seeing that, but it's it, it's absolutely true. Yeah, I mean, when I look at the, the U.S. diet, for instance, and we are considered to heavily eat meat, and I mean, particularly when we look at like cattle, you know, overall, from a caloric standpoint or, or the food volume standpoint, only, you know, seven, eight percent of our diet is actually coming from meat. The largest animal source is probably dairy. But then 70 percent of the rest of the food is coming from, you know, uh, plants. And, and most of it is processed garbage, you know, refined grains, mm-hmm. sugar, seed oils and so on and so forth. And so just on a, just on a volume basis, yes, clearly there's people eating more not meat food. Um, and you mentioned, you know, like these people part of the fresh, you know, fresh alliance or whatever, what do they mm-hmm. call themselves? Uh, you know, play pharmaceutical companies. Why would, why would pharmaceutical companies, you know, be interested in this? Because obviously, we know eating meat is the root of all evil, and it makes us sick. And uh, so, why would they stand to benefit? Well, my view is that the the pharma interest in this is maintained by um, maintaining the widespread view that high LDL cholesterol is bad for us, and high LDL cholesterol is is obviously they they need us to fear that because then we'll be very receptive to the idea that we all need to take a statin drug at some point in our lives, maybe even when we're children, because this is increasingly being promoted as a preventative um, medicine to lower LDL. And so, and why an LDL, of course, they they need to, why, why does LDL go up? Apparently, because of the saturated fat in animal foods. So whenever you hear a pharma uh, rep talking or somebody from that industry talking about disease or LDL, there's always a leaning towards plant-based because that supports their, that supports their theory and their uh, marketing angle on LDL and statin use. If we all went plant-based and our LDL dropped naturally, then it would be less use for statins. Is that not a fair counter to that? And- that is a fair, a very fair point. Yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, and I, I'll just, you know, my, my thought on this is, you know, there's saturated fat has been linked and associated with increases in LDL cholesterol and more importantly, probably the ApoV particles. But then there's also the side of the equation on the vascular side. Well, what promotes vascular stickiness? To yeah, sorry. I think I might have missed, I, I jumped a gun there because I think you said if we went plant based, our LDL would drop. Did you say yeah, that? I did. Yes. You did say that. Sorry. Um, and that may be the case, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's linked to um, that the drop in LDL would help actual heart health right, and, and right. reduce cardiovascular uh, events and uh, mortality. And in fact, there is much evidence to prove that it, that would not do that. Unless you talk to vegan advocates, you know, there, there's, a, you know, there's these new drugs called PCSK9 inhibitors, and now they can get someone's LDL cholesterol down to 25 milligrams per deciliter, which is you know, historically unheard of, no one's ever done that. And they now have short-term data that says that's safe and therefore we should 
<laughs> we should perhaps see that long term for for people uh, a little bit a little bit concerning. But that's but let's let's talk about um, you know uh, the other pillar. You know, we kind of touched on health and the environment, the ethical mm-hmm. side. Obviously, you're cruel and mean if you have meat on your plate. You know, you have, don't you know a little cute little pig had to suffer for your for your guilty taste pleasure. This is always a thing. The only reason you're eating it is for taste pleasure. Well, if that was the case, I'd be eating ice cream all day, but that's not the case mm. for nutrition. What are your What are your thoughts on the ethical argument? I think it's a, it's a really big part of the argument, and I think in some ways, well, in many ways, we we should be grateful for vegan advocates and animal welfare advocates for alerting us to the intense amount of cruelty that exists in in factory farming systems, um, and we do need to be cognizant of that. And I think that even though I'm a big supporter of keeping meat in the diet and um, regenerative farming systems being the way forward and they need animals to operate, I'm also very much not in favor of factory farming systems. And I think really the worst, some of the most egregious crimes are committed against um, uh, chickens and pigs in our system. So cows have a pretty good time of it generally compared to those uh, groups. And so ironically, although the the um, the war is really against red meat and cows, they are the ones that are taking the hit in terms of you know, the, the media war against them. Um, it's really chickens and pigs, which we should be concerned about. And they're also, it, it's those uh, animals who, to whom we feed most of the grains. So the argument about we we should be we should not be feeding grains that could go to humans. We feed them to animals instead. It's mostly those monogastric an- gastric animals who are eating the grains. So I think we need to really do something about the way we farm chickens and pigs for sure, both from a welfare point of view and from a um, from an environmental. Uh, land use point of view. Let me, let me, and this is going to be a little conspiratorial, sorry. But um, so if we look at production of these animals, the United States is a, beef, is a beef capital of the world. I mean, we, I mean, there's more in Brazil and more in India, but we produce the most beef per capita any, any place in the world, and no one comes close. Um, if we look at pig production, that's pretty much China. I mean, China is where all these pigs yeah. are being produced. And there's some people will say, well, we're, this policy favors China, and it's to the detriment of the United States. You think there's an aim to that argument, perhaps? Well, definitely, we need to be looking at where those pig, uh, where that uh, pork is produced, and that's where all the soy is going as well from Brazil. Right, Most sure. of the soy is going there to feed those uh, those animals. Now, we don't have much uh, control over what China's doing, but um, yes, we are playing into the hands of China and the growth of that that factory farm uh, pork industry by um, insisting that we eat less meat, really, because that's just not going to help. And as somebody pointed out, um, the if we if everybody in the United States stopped eating meat, neither would that stop the deforestation going on in Brazil or anywhere else with rainforest uh, to 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 cut down. Uh, because there are bigger economic factors, including demand from China, which is driving the use of that land. It's not a simple, we'll stop eating meat, all that problem is going to go away. It's not a case of that at all. Yeah. So if we look at, you know, because I always, oh, you know, meat is a main reason for deforestation in the Amazon. And, you know, we look at forest cover throughout mm-hmm. the world is actually increasing, particularly North America and Europe. But when we when we say how is how is meat not eating a steak from Nebraska going to impact the rainforest in Brazil and, and I would argue there's really no impact on that at all. And yeah. what you said is you know the, the reason these you know I mean there's, I know it's very complicated. I know there, the, the some of the sugar farming in the Cerrado is now transferred to the Amazon or are, they, they kick the cows out of there and so now they have to graze somewhere else and they still cut down timber is a big industry. They cut down these trees because they need the timber to build. And then they and then they plant soy in there for 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 soybean oil. 100% of soy goes to soybean oil or bio bio biofuels, and it's eaten and consumed by humans. And the soy meal is, is fed to the 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 pigs in China largely. So what you know as far as that dynamic is concerned. Um, so when you say if I give up meat in the United States and we all went vegan, there would still be deforestation in the Amazon. You think? Yes. There would. It would be driven by some some other economic factor and other markets. And in fact, something like that debate has been taking place over here regarding um, Ireland, mm-hmm. because uh, Ireland has quite uh, 
high emissions relative to the the rest of the UK to the UK from livestock. And there is it is proposed to do a big cull of the cows wow. in Ireland. Which you've heard about this, yeah. and um, uh, a couple of scientists, uh, including Miles Allen and uh, Frank Mitloner, last week were arguing that this if you if you implement a cull that is going to do absolutely nothing but harm on the emissions front, because what's going to happen is, if you haven't addressed the other factors that drive demand for meat uh, and the need for meat, that uh, meat that Ireland was providing is just going to be sourced from somewhere else. And it's going to be sourced from a place probably with a worse environmental record in terms of feeding grains to to, to cattle and uh, animals and uh, clearing rainforest. So if you just address one lever without thinking about the others, I think that's a really dangerous policy. 